Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the channel. And today we're going to be discussing Marlo, Kenya, and Candy. And the whole big deal of <coughs> them not giving her, <coughs> excuse me, the love that she feels they need to be giving her. They need to be congratulating her <coughs> and throwing a party and all this because she became a peach holder. I'm like, Marlo, 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 these people are not your friends, baby girl. And you show that with each episode. So why would you even think that they will call you and tell you congratulations? You know, congratulations, because technically you've been on the show forever in a day. Even though you weren't a peach holder, you were a friend of a peach holder. Still same thing to me. The only thing that's different is the money being transferred out. And what they're getting paid and you're not getting paid. Okay, so now that we got that out of, out of the, <coughs> the woodwork, we're going to be talking about... Marlo, how she feels, how she really feels about Kenya and Candy. All right. I don't know how she can be cool with Candy's husband, but she can't be cool with Candy. And we already know it's not enough nuts and bolts in a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, carpenter's lair that's going to put and fix Marlo and Kenya together again. <laughs> no, no, no. They're like oil and water or, war, or, or water and oil. You know, it just don't mix. It, it has a way of shining on the top and presenting itself like it's likable, relatable, releasable, but it just doesn't mix well together. Okay, but let's get into this article or I guess you would say a Zoom conference type of call they had with uh, Marlo Hampton and the women on SS access.com i believe so a little platform social media platform and they're interviewing marlo on the comes and goings of her relationship with candy and marlo and how it's faring since we've been seeing you know the show uh progress towards the end and the reunion and um how did she feel about getting broke in on i'm like that was a dumbass question but it had to be answered i guess asked and answered but um Let's just listen to what Marlo had to say. Housewives Night Cap, after so much talk about her from the other peaches, we are excited to welcome this peach for the first time. Welcome, Marlo. Hi, ladies. Hi, Lauren and Emily. Marlo, we have been waiting to have you on because, like Emily said, there's been talk. So now we need you side of the story of the stories because like I said there's a lot of talk but first things first you're finally a housewife this is your first official season as a housewife how has it been it feels amazing I'm just so excited um, something that a lot of people don't know just let me clarify that because I know it's been a lot of talk like oh she's so excited to get this piece she's waited a decade I was offered a peach before, and I didn't take it at the time. So let them just clear that she's so desperate for it. Because if I was so desperate, I would have accepted 10 years ago, okay? So I just want to be clear on all the people that are saying I'm so desperate for the peach. But it does. Well, uh, just a sidebar. Marlo, if you weren't that desperate and whatnot, you wouldn't have been keeping on, keeping on with that friend of a peach holder contract. And we know you were holding out for more money. That's all. We know you were holding out for more money. So, ah, if you were thirsty bucket, you was a thirst bucket. It just is what it is. Roll with it, baby. Roll with it. I just feel amazing. I feel the timing wasn't right then, but it's amazing now. I'm loving it. I'm embracing it. I'm supporting it. And I'm just really, I'm feeling real peachy. I love it. 
So, uh, Marla, we know that you're still super close with Nini. Um, has she given you any advice on this season, how to manage these ladies? No, she hasn't at all. She has not given me any advice how to manage these ladies. <laughs> you're like, she's like, I'm staying out of that. Yeah, like I just remember what she taught me along the way and what she told me about them. Mm. <laughs> right, you're si oh, there you go to sit the now, I don't know if that was Ellen or whoever that was that answered that stupid-ass question. How can you manage people? You're not, they're not your servants. You're not in control of what they do, what they say, how they look, how they perform. I'm like, what the hell is this woman talking about? See, that's why they need different uh, races of people, you know, giving interviews. I mean, a black person giving, you know, dealing with a black person and asking those questions. And then you could have had a, a, a Caucasian woman ask some similar to or not an outrageous thing. Like, what the hell are you talking about manage? Oh, she got on my nerves, y'all. I had to interject there. But anyway, okay, we're going to move on. Because you're like, oh, a little tea and then cocktail. Well, you just cleared the air about, like, other the women calling you a little desperate. Now, Candy, though, she said you got the peach and you started throwing it at people. And so what was it, what's your reaction to that? This is my reaction to that. Let's be real. You know you're Marla. You, you watch the show, correct? Yes, of course we do. It's Housewives <laughs> Nightcap. We love that. Exactly. So listen, you know I don't have the best delivery, right? I've never had it for 10 years, right? And you admit that. You do admit I, that. I don't. I admit. I admit, like, shit, I need to. I just need to interject again, Marlo. Come on, baby. Tell me you're not the bit. You don't have to be an atomically articulate correct all the time with your pronunciation of certain words, some pronouns, certain verbs, certain nouns. Just be you. And to me, everybody know you come from a messed up type of situation or how you view things let's just call a spade a spade you are a mean girl you come from the mean girl squad marlo if everybody's not hailing you or praising you or whatever positivity not being sent your way you're gonna know how to uh, address people you're gonna be rude you're gonna use anything in your arsenal to defend yourself amongst these women it just is what it is, okay? And that's pretty much what Kenya does. She just do it a little bit more quicker and a little bit more sassier, okay? So don't be uh, saying your delivery is not correct. No, we know, we know what your delivery is, and that's to get these women straight, meaning Candy and Kenya and anybody else that want to come for you. So don't go with, oh, you're not as educated as Kenya, you know, trying to put the uh, victim or play the victim type role. No, we're far from that, Marlo. We know you are hood and you want to be bougie and we just need to call you bougie hood. OK, that's all. Nothing saying nothing. Not to say to take away from you or anything, but you are hood when it comes to these girls. You want to like pull up, uh, pull off the gloves. You want to put on your nut chucks and get busy. You know what I'm saying? Oil your face so they won't be putting scratches on you. You know, getting ready for the battle. So just because Kenya, Kenya's not a fighter. I don't think she ever was a fighter. But she know how to get to that coin. You mess with her. You assault her. She knows to go and file the correct paperwork on your behind. Okay. In less than uh, 48 hours, you'll probably be in jail. Okay. But let's move on to the next um, question that was being asked of you. Okay. Like an etiquette class, how to deliver, or maybe I should start hiring like an interpreter to be there with me. Like, I'm seeing this, but can you say it better? <laughs> My delivery is awful. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. But one thing I would say, you guys have to say, I have not changed. You see me more now, so you get more of it. I've never been shy, I've never been one to hold back what I'm thinking. So it's like, I'm so confused when people are saying, Oh, she's getting the peaches. Girl, I say this. Candy, you and I fussed for 10 years. Kenya, you and I fussed for 10 years. I'm over it. So it's not me changing. It's not getting the peach. It's just that you get to see me more. So what you see in me more, you just see more of me not delivering the message as pretty as some want me to deliver. So going off of that, though, with Candy, you said some things in the start of the season that she was not happy about. You called her a hoe. First of all, Candy was a damn hoe. She 
Lord, I tell you, white people's pronunciation of the word ho is so different from when we said ho, you know what I'm saying? And then we could, we could say ho, and we'd be meaning it. So what Marlo was trying to say, she didn't mean to call Candy a ho, please. Okay, because Candy can be a ho, Marlo can be a ho, you can be a ho, I can be a ho. Just who hoeing the most, and who's hoeing that toe bag to the bank, Okay. Like I said, I'm a hoe. You know, I'm a hoe. I get those bags right after the show. I'm a hoe. You know, I'm a hoe. Yes, honey. It's okay to be a hoe here and there. Body for free. Yeah. That bitch was a hoe that's, and that pussy wasn't good. And that's why you I always got, got the date underneath, underneath your tax bracket. bracket, okay? Preach. You know what? I'm going to say this. I regret. I'm, I take back. And Sheree and her facts. Oh, Lord have mercy. But, you know. Marlo is a little younger than Sheree. Sheree is not over the hill by no means of the word, but Sheree, she's Switzerland, okay? She's going to straddle that fence. She's going to play on wherever she thinks she's going to get the most spotlight. She's going to try to be on the winning team is what I'm trying to say. But moving on. What other name can I use for? Um, not whore. Okay, let me just be clear with the candy thing as well. I'm going to take my time and track and word all this better, okay? Hi. So with candy, I've known candy, Lauren, longer than all the girls in our circle. I used to date her godbrother. I used to date her godbrother. So with candy, I don't feel like she's new. Like, I can't say what I want to say to her. I feel like I can say whatever I'm thinking to you. We're a little more intimate and closer than these other girls. So I feel if I'm thinking something, I'm going to tell Candy. I'm not going to hold it back. But now keep in mind, the other girls in the circle say, oh, I'm not going to say this to Candy. I'm not going to do this. But look, Candy, for 10 years, y'all have talked about me dating an older white man, where I get my money from. Where I get my money from, Candy originally started that. I went on her show, speak on it with Charles Grant, and her. So she trying to say she getting Candy back for all what was done way back when and then some no marlo you still think candy's a hoe you think she has that whole mentality the only thing you can understand or believe is why you can't be as well versed when it comes to the money get into that bag why can't you close those deals like candy just keep the same energy you have when you're you're in person with her and y'all are arguing okay keep that same energy because we're not buying it marlo we're not buying it you bit out more than you can chew and ken is really showing her ass and i like it i love it because i'm tired of her whining and crying and staying behind somebody else kenya is still holding her uh, posture she's still holding her tone and she won't let you get to her. And that's the point. You want to get under Kenya's skin. And Ken, Kenya won't allow it. Remember, Kenya was an actress. She might be still an actress. But she knows how to perform. And she knows how to get what she wants out of someone's character and their energy. And you just haven't figured that one out yet. <sighs> you want them to say Marlo, Marlo, Marlo instead of Kenya Candy and whomever is on the show. Let's just keep it 100. Let's keep it 1,000, okay, Marlo? Her first thing was, where you get your money from? Who the hell asked that? But guess what? That's been an unfair fight ever since. Because when Candy asks me that, everywhere I go, every interview, where do you get your money from? I feel that's disrespectful and distasteful. Right. But back to get back on the subject, back to the whore. How do I feel about that? I don't feel she's a whore. I just feel she's experienced. That's it. Okay, what about the tax bracket comment? Because I don't know if you saw. Now, I can't believe you said she's more experienced. Okay, that's another civil, but yet articulate way of saying that Candy's a hoe. Okay, you were very much saying the same thing. You just dressed it up. So, see. Marlo, you just told on your own self. You understand fully when somebody's being very articulate and very uh, shady from a higher scale. Uh, so don't play that bullshit. You just walked in your own trap that you set for yourself, and we got a chance to see it. Now, Candy did do her Candy Cares drive for the go-back-to-school youngins. 
uh, for this year and next year. Beautiful job, Candy. Keep doing work in the community and you will continue to prevail. All right, going back, y'all. Pod, he made like a little remark about it on Watch What Happens Live. Listen. I love Todd to pieces. Todd and I, we can hang, we can go out and drink. I hate that Todd always gets in the middle of our stuff. When I'm mad at her, I got to state facts. But I love Todd to death. He's always been super amazing. We've just connected. We have a connection like no other. And I think Todd gets me more than candy. But as in tax bracket, I, I totally feel she does stay under her tax bracket. That's just being honest. And other people feel that, but they don't want to say it. I mean, I just feel Candy loves to be in control, and nothing's wrong with that. A lot of us women are making more money than our men, and we do have women who want to be in control. Shit, I'm one of them. I like right. to be in control. Yeah. I'm just not going to date under my tax bracket. That's just not me, unless he just puts a spell over me. I've never even yeah. heard this, like, date under your tax bracket. I'm just seeing it's the things I say, you guys. And see this white woman going to get up here on access.com and laugh. I'm like, I never heard it being explained that way. When white women have been doing it all day, every day for the longest time. Okay? They don't want to mess with no bro, bro, black brother, eager. No, they don't. That's why they go for the athletes, the doctors, the lawyers. So you may not perceive it how Marley put it there, girl interviewer but you know damn well what she's saying all right and you may say it amongst your own guy yes we can't date in the words of marla hampton below our tax bracket when well, hell y'all probably don't even have jobs to start with or if it is a job that you own it's probably not a professional one ew you have to say right. when you hang up with me now you have to say damn that is true but maybe she could have said this word instead it's just the truth. And I realized, damn, shy, I come on here and lie? Do I need to lie? Like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I love Candy. She's such a hard worker. She's an entrepreneur. She's everything. She's so sweet, has a great husband. I can give you that. She is that. But come on, let's tell the truth. What will Wendy Williams say? Will Wendy, will Wendy Williams tell the truth? You accept her. Well, here we go again. She's trying to insert people in her argument. And we know the love that you're trying to spell or pretend and put out there. Just like, can you say it? I don't want that kind of love. I don't need that or deserve that kind of love. So keep your love way over there where you at. I was I was feeling Kenya when she said that. And Marlo is full of shit for saying that. Once again, how you gonna love and and, and and feel like you very supportive and taught, uh knows where you coming from, but you can't get with his wife. Are you kidding me? Do you actually think Candy gonna allow Todd to hang with you or have any more conversation with you? Girl, how stupid are you? Truth, mm. right? So have you ever dated under your tax bracket? Have I ever? Um, yes. Definitely in high school, middle school, yes. Okay. <laughs> they got less allowances than me. <laughs> Now, see, that's what they like about Marlo. And I can give her touche on that one as well. She answered the question, uh, has she ever dated? Yeah, she said in high school. <laughs> Probably elementary and kindergarten, too. Uh, but, no, we know Marlo. She has that swirl persuasion of a dating of a male suitor. Yes, he got to be old. He got to be white or Italian or any other race but besides black. She wants the money with no questions, just directions on what she has to do to get you to open up that wallet, that bank account. Okay, get them dollars, not coins. Continue on. <laughs> okay, okay. Now let's clear this up. It's not like I go and say, hey, what do you make? Right. I look like money, so I attract money. I don't attract broke. I don't. I just think a broke man would be intimidated to talk to me. So that's how we find them, Lauren. We need to start looking like money. This is what we need yeah. to do. We need to like elevate. <laughs> like These white women are totally ditzy. Ditzy. I'm like, do they have a journalistic journalism degree or who got them oh they could have known somebody uh privileged life they got them on interviewing people because i'm like 
<laughs> y'all are co-signing what Marlo's saying. So now y'all gonna go, God, get the fuck out of here. Okay. Money you're attracting. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so we gotta ask about Kenya. What? Oh, <laughs> wait, Marlo, what was that? <laughs> I say Tylenol, please. <laughs> where? How do you feel about Kenya right now? Is there a world where you want you and her to be cool, to make peace? You know what? Forget Kenya. Kenya is not for me. Like, I'm not coming on here dressing as you, sending you invites, and I see that you're the same person. And if you really want to keep it 100, last year at the reunion, you guys don't remember I had told Andy? He said, so do you trust Kenya? And what did I tell him? No, I don't trust her. I'm trying to get to ignore her, but I don't trust her because she's so good with her words. She so knows how to sit here and say, she's such an evil person. She's such a bad. But tell what you did. Did you ever celebrate me or tell me, Marlo, congratulations. You finally got that peach, sis. Did you ever say, oh my God, I'm so proud of you at La Archive. No, you came to La Archive to beat all the other girls to critique it. And you ran right away. I was like, oh, she spelled it wrong. You're not a friend. You're not a true, authentic, sincere friend. I'm sorry, you're just not. Okay. I feel like you both are saying the same thing about things about each other. So yeah. maybe it's just like, um, no, there, it's just not a connection with you two. It's not. It's yeah. definitely not, and I'm okay with it. I pray for her because she just needs jesus she say that um she's cool with him but she definitely needs jesus i'm just done i feel that we're both two strong personalities yeah and it's just it's a lot of deeper stuff watch the reunion i'm gonna let it out i'm gonna let it be known okay what it is. but it's even more but as of now you got why well, it's it is what it is i mean the gloves are off yeah are you worried about going not up against but like also kenya candy and kenya both said watch the reunion like the gloves are coming off when it comes to you and now you're saying the same thing oh no i've been in the gym i've been eating my wings <laughs> i'm ready, ready. <laughs> you're ready and we saw kenya kind of criticize you about your nephews and you what you were going through with them and deciding to have them live with your sister how have you kind of take that criticism from her and other people online because some people yeah. have said, like, what's going on with that? You know what, Lauren and Emily? People have been awful with it. Yeah. Marlo Hampton, who you've known for 10 years, right? Single, fabulous, over-the-top, extra sis, whatever. It's just auntie. Call, you get a gift, you get school clothes, you get presents. I get a phone call three years ago. Auntie, we need you to come pick us up. I'm in a boot. I just had bunion surgery. I'm like, okay, got to pick him up. I tell my assistant, hey, let's go pick up my nephews. I'm not even supposed to be out of the bed. I thought the pickup was like pickup for the weekend. I didn't know pickup forever. Your life has changed. So if it took me three years to have that breaking point, to have a moment like, hey, something I'm doing is not right. Something, I just need a reset, a recharge. I need to... I just have to stop Marlo right there. Okay. No, you weren't biologically nobody's parent. Okay. And maybe that is a good thing, Marlo. Maybe that is a good thing. But girl, okay. Everyday mothers and dads, they, the are responsible, that uh, they, they accept their toe that they have to hoe the road when they have or they say they want to make a family they have children or they have a child guess what that's a job every day 365 days of the year whether you feel like it or you don't whether you're going through a breakdown or you're not that's something we cannot do. We cannot just throw our children and say, go stay here for a while until I get myself together. Or I'm feeling like I need my space where I'm single again and I don't have to give a fuck about nobody but myself. Okay? Yeah, Marla, when you said, because once you went down and found out what the boys were really trying to say, you could have made your decision. Now, like, baby, I can keep y'all, but I can't keep y'all like Every day y'all going to be coming home to me and I'm going to be taking care of y'all. I can't do that. You should have been honest with yourself and you should have been honest with them. Because guess what? 
the ones that are true parents out there, whether they're a single parent or whether they have uh, um, both parents in the household, raising kids ain't no joke. Okay, you have to worry about their spirit, spirit, uh, spirituality. You have to worry about the emotional input that you're wanting to foster in them or manifest in them. You got to make sure they don't want to accord with who they are and be very defined when it comes to the explanation of being black or being African-American. You know, not the same role, not a privy or privileged role that they have to go through. And then they're young black men. Okay, you have to teach them what society is all about, how the world citizens view black young men or black men period and the things that they got to go through all right we don't give that option to say i'm just fed up on tired. i need a month off no ma'am you'll be glad if you get a day off or maybe a weekend but you just don't assume a position and then try to play dumb that uh you didn't know about this you saw your sisters raising her four boys you, girl, you saw your friends with kids and what they have to do. I mean, they have to compromise. They have to give of themselves so the greater good can be done within the kids' system. That's called sacrifice, Marlo. Sacrifice. Look it up. Inherit it. Embody it. Be it. That's all I'm saying. So, the the, the hate or the... Uh, negativity that came your way when you saying, oh, I couldn't take my um, two nephews a day more. I had to send them to my baby girl's sister's house, which had limited amount of space. And she already had four kids. And then you want to throw two teenagers into that per diem? No, that paradox was all wrong and you had no right. You only get a day or a weekend, boo, a day or a weekend or put them in foster care. Just say you couldn't do it and let the cookies fall where they may. But you didn't want that being put in your face. So whether it was three years, three months, three days, guess what? You accepted that role and it's plausible. You got paid from the state. By taking in your two uh, nephews. They're not biologically yours. But you were saying I will take care of them. And the state provides money for that. So are you willing? Did you give the state back that month? Uh, did you get that proceeds back to the state? Or better yet. Did you give what you were getting for both your nephews? Did you give that resources. Those funds to your sister. Since she actually kept them for a month. So it's all bullshit. You can dress it up how you want to do it. You can say what you want to say. But we all know those who are true mothers and true daddies out there. Okay. And this whole thing about, oh, when the reunion come, I'm going to let them have it. And they're going to let you have it. Whatever. Let it come. And we can kiki and ha-ha about it. But guess what? Life goes on. And if you're not going to treat the boys correctly, don't treat them at all. Because where did they get that, mm, what you call it, um, um, privy life? Um, where did you get that? They so spoiled. Well, evidently they weren't getting spoiled at home with their mama. So you had to teach them that, those uh, traits, those characteristics. They had to learn it from you being spoiled, having access to in and everything. And now you just want to say, oh, I did that wrong. I need to erase that from their memory banks. It doesn't work that way, Marlo. It doesn't work that way. But let's continue on. Let's see what they, uh, what else these two bad interviewers are going to say this time. Sit and talk to other parents. I need therapy. I don't know what's going on right now. Because I just jumped in. Like, I got this. I can do it. And after three years, I need a break and I need to call my little sister, who's a mother of four young boys that lives with her fiance, who's a male, that these boys I know would be safe and protected. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry because guess what? I needed that time for me. I needed a reset. I really needed to talk to other girlfriends who had children. I needed to do what I did, went and see a therapist. I, I hired a life coach. I needed a moment. I was at a... A moment is just that. A moment. 
not a day, not a year, not three months. So you still saying cop out shit. You still saying you ain't worth shit. You ain't shit when it came to those boys. Just admit it. Move it and go on. Okay, that's all we want you to do. And let them kids be with somebody who's going to take all their bad days as well as all their good days. All the flaws. And you can help them fix those flaws. But the stuff that you're saying, you're still talking out the side of your neck. And we don't give a shit about what you're saying. We really, really don't. I needed this. I needed that. Well, guess what? You should have thought about it before you told those boys they can come live with you. Because basically, you could have picked them up for the weekend or for the week and explained to them that you are not in that headspace to take care of them and care for them the way they need to be cared for. But like I said, you got paid from the state. You need to keep on, keep it on, girl, with them kids, okay? Break them in. So do I just, do I just break and be like, oh, get out, go to foster care? Or do I break and say, okay, I'm not sending them to foster care. Sis, I need you for a minute. I think I went so fast these three years. I don't know what the hell I'm doing now. They're not listening to me. They're getting really spoiled. They're being too privileged. I need a break right now. I need a I need a moment to just figure this out. Right. And guess what? Everyone took it right. Oh, she kicked them out. So it was just really I mean, it was just bad. It was I could well, Marlo, that's exactly what you did. You're saying you don't have the greatest delivery and the, the way you articulate yourself is not as good as how Kenya does it. But, baby, you were very articulate when you said you needed a break and you got them on the next thing smoking to, their sister, to your sister's house. So, mm, we're not buying that either. What have you done for the community this year, Marlo? Did you do everything like Candace over there doing for the um, go back to school? Dry fund that she does every year. Mm-hmm. What are you doing, Amara? What did you do for your foster kids? Okay. Or a foster program that you have where I don't know what you do with them children. Even if you do something. Maybe you just did it just because you're on this show. And you have to show and prove that you are a good citizen in society. Girl. Moving on. See how bad they went online if, they, if I have them go to foster care. I was like, oh, you just get out of here. Because I called my little sister. And keep in mind now, they're at my sister's. I'm calling his teachers every day still. I'm checking on their homework still. I'm paying for them to get back and forth to school still. I'm like, I'm like, Crystal, don't tell them I'm calling. And why are you paying for them? Don't they ride the school bus? The big little bus women, the bill the wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. They can walk they can um catch the bus i mean i'm sure they have if they're in private school i'm sure they have a bus system uh yeah uh-huh yeah you know they asking about me i was so upset because william wasn't thinking about me he was on roblox all day he wasn't doing his homework so it was like they wasn't here but i was still stressing and worried about them right so for everyone who's saying all that negative stuff screw them because no, Marlo, screw you. Screw you because if you were still doing that behind the scenes type of work, them kids should have been front and center in your home, at your home. Do you not know you're devastating you're devastating them by pulling them up, uprooting them from somewhere that they just got used to being at and then throwing them in another scenario of what ifs? Is this person going to love me? Is this person going to kick me? If I say this, is this going to um, make them feel bad and want to get rid of me? You, you got too many negatives going on. And you say you're seeing a therapist. I'm sure the therapist probably told you also, you either give them kids back or put them in foster care, or do right by them. Those are the only choices you have. The only choices you have. And let the cookies fall where they may. But don't come crying and whining and, and, and uh, trying to get somebody to feel sympathy for you. No, 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 no. Because then we got to feel sympathy for every last single mom out there, every, every single dad out there, or even... Uh, a two-parent household we got to feel sorry for them too they don't get the just do they don't get the accolades all the time doing the bad times doing the good times they have to make do what it is to do Ooh. i did no one talked about the three years how hard i went the three right. years i didn't hesitate when my sister emily or lauren called and said hey i need you to get my kids i was like 
I'm there right then and there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, what the hell I was getting into, didn't know this is permanent. Right. I feel I've done a damn good job. And I thank God for that break because that break has helped us. We're doing great. Yeah. We're along better. We're communicating better. The three of us see the life coach together. We're at an amazing place in our household. So you are, the kids are back because we saw that you had a horrible experience recently. You were burglarized. How are you feeling after that? Um, And we're just going to stop there because I don't really believe Marlo when she said she had reached out to the other housewives and let them know what she could let them know because they were being surveillance uh, or having uh, some type of surveillance where they could catch this a uh, particular group of men that were going around uh, house burglarizing, you know, women that were a part of reality shows or their celebrities uh, or, you know, the, the people that they're married to are celebrities and they just targeting that group of people. So, you know, we don't want to hear all this bullshit you're giving us, Marlo, okay? But hopefully you will prevail and you will probably, hopefully, make some sense of your comings and goings of what you did with those boys because uh, on the outside looking in it was piss poor it was push piss poor it's foolishness fuckery fraudulent fakery shit going on with you and them and you taking care of them boys and then you talking about todd know you he he he, he knows you know you a little bit better than candy really girl get the hell out of here but that's all i got for this particular video guys y'all like it love got out more Okay, maybe we can try to make it make sense. But uh, that's on my other channel. <laughs> Y'all need to go over there and subscribe now. Subscribe, share, like, and comment. All right? And I'll see y'all next video. Bye-bye.